make my hair floofy enough. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. To anyone new here, hi, my name is Alex and I talk a lot about plants and planty things. On today's video, I'm going to talk about trading online, specifically on Facebook. So, here's a few things to know if you're new to the plant community. So you may or may not already know this, but there's a lot of groups on Facebook that are dedicated to plants, to selling plants and treating plants, and to just sharing and talking about plants. There's uh, things you need to know. I'm really hoping that a lot of people who are newer to the plant community find this video helpful. I know that I probably should have watched a few of these videos back in the day when I was just getting into plants. I'm sure these videos exist. I haven't watched them myself. I just figured I would make one for you guys. Just things I've observed and things I've found helpful when it comes to Facebook plant groups. I'm not gonna name any groups in particular. There, there's some that I really like and there's some that I've left because I just did not like ooh, the vibes, the views, the people in the groups. So getting sidetracked again. My point to this video is trading plants online. So it's different than buying a plant from someone and even then you still gotta be careful. But trading is a little different because you're agreeing to ship your plant to this person you've never met and most of the time someone you haven't even spoken to before ever ever and you're going to ship a plant that could be valuable to you could be sentimental could be could have cost you a lot of money so you're agreeing to ship something a piece of your collection to a, a stranger someone you've never met so what are some things that can keep you safe and guarantee a fair trade? So the first tip I'd like to give you guys, say you come across a post in a plant group and it says ISO in search of philodendromycin, okay, any plant. And you're like, hmm, I got that plant. And you see that they're looking to trade for that plant. So you can comment on that post and say, I've got that. And they'll probably be like, okay, DM me. So then you message the person. But what I'd like to do even before I start messaging this person is I click on their picture. And before it brings you to their profile page, it'll say so-and-so has been a part of this group since July 25th, right? So say since today. I'm going to be like, mm. all right, maybe I'll like search their name in the search bar above to see if they pop up in any of the other plant groups I'm in, which I'm in a lot. If I can't find anything on this person and if they just joined this group today, probably not gonna trade with them. Sorry, probably not. I like to see that someone's been a member of a group for a while. I like to see that they've got previous posts that they've traded before. That's one, the number one tip I can give you is kinda, creep on the person, kind of look into who this person is. Sometimes you can go a little further and click on their profile. And again, this is what people put out there. This is on your public profile and you might see some things you don't agree with and you might be like, mm, you know what? I don't want to plant from this person. That goes into, that's, you know, but this is just things to consider, okay? Number two tip I can give you got to exchange photos. So if they're looking for a philodendromycans and that's what you have, <laughs> you know, you're probably going to say, what do you have? What could you take for cuttings? What are you thinking of trading for this plant? And they'll make a list of things and you can say, okay, I'm really interested in this. Do you have any photos of it? examine those photos. Is it a rooted plant? These are also questions you want to ask them. Is it a rooted plant? Um, how long have you been rooting it for? How are you rooting it? Because these are things you'd want to know once it's in your home. Uh, was it imported if that applies? Have you had any issues with it? You know, these are some things you want to know. And make sure you send them pictures of your plant as well, just in case they're having any questions about you. 
you want them to know that you're a real person as well and you've really got this planned. Now, after you've spoken to the person for a bit, you've exchanged photos, you've kind of creeped on them a little bit, then you're going to talk about when and how you're gonna ship the plant. That's important. You wanna know how your plant will be shipped to you. And they're gonna to wanna to know how you're gonna ship your plant. Believe it or not, I've had people ship plants in envelopes, in cereal boxes. People are crazy. So you're gonna to wanna to know are they shipping it bare root? Are they shipping it in soil, in moss, in a wet paper towel, in a diaper? People have done it, believe me, I've seen it. So I like to give some details of how I'll be shipping the plant. And I also like to ask the person, do they have a preference? Because depending on the plant, some ship better in moss, some ship better in soil. If it's a cutting, if it's like a Hoya, you probably don't wanna put it in anything. You usually ship Hoya cuttings dry. So. Again, not everybody knows this. These are just some tips. If you don't ask these questions, you're probably going to regret it. You're probably going to receive a plant in bad condition or not at all. And you're going to be like, why didn't I ask for photos? Why didn't I ask how they'd be shipping the plant? Next time I'm going to do this. These are all things you'll learn. It is just a plant, but just to save you the heartache, if you are shipping a plant that is sentimental or valuable to you, you, you want to get a fair trade. So in my experience, I've always just shipped the plant. I, you know, will print up the label myself at home. You can go to the post office as well. I just think it's easier to do it yourself at home and print it out and slap it on. And then I just ship it when it comes to shipping the plant. So you do want to talk to the person about how they're gonna package the plant, like I said, not in a cereal box or a diaper, uh, and when they're going to ship it. So you're gonna wanna ship a plant probably on a Monday or Tuesday, especially in these times. There's just, the shipping delays have been crazy. Basically, you wanna know what they're shipping, so picture evidence, how they're shipping it, so the packaging, and when they're shipping it. Then you're gonna want to ask for the tracking. They should just give you the tracking number. It should just be done without saying. If everything goes smoothly, they're going to just send you the tracking and you do the same. And then it basically is fun from there. You get the plant, hopefully it's alive, and what you were promised that you'd be getting, and then you thank the person and there you go. That's how you do a plant trade. Now, if you don't want someone knowing your home address, if you have a PO box, use that. If you don't, maybe look into one or have it mailed to a place of work. Say the plant arrives dead. This is a risk that you take when you're shipping plants. Plants can show up dead. The person who shipped it, depending on how they packaged it, they could have packaged it perfectly and it can arrive dead. You know, the box could have gotten crushed. The weather, the temperatures could have killed it, fried it. You can let them know and I'm sure they'll feel horrible about it. If it were you, if you shipped a plant and it died, you got to think of, okay, well, what, what is in my capabilities here to make it up to this person? Do I have another one of those plants to ship to them? And even if I do, it's valuable like am i going to ship that plant to them that i mean that would be nice of you but not everybody wants to do that can they claim it through usps i know some people have been able to claim it through usps and other people have been told that they can't because it is a perishable item so all you can basically do is pray that plants show up alive because it's really difficult in a trade it's not like you can reimburse a person like they didn't pay for it so I don't know, <laughs> that, that's a tricky one. That's something else to think about. If the person turned out to just be a total scam, if it's been such a long time, you haven't received the plant, you haven't heard from them, they blocked you, blah, 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 then you have to report it to either the group administrators or there's plant review groups, buy, sell, trade review groups, and it'd be very helpful for you to let those groups know and those administrators know 
that this person did not do a fair trade with you and it just saves a lot of other people headaches. Sometimes people will say they're trading a plant, they get your plant, they don't ship their, their end of the deal, and then they sell your plant. You know, like there's some scammy people out there. So that's why you really need to look into people before you ship your plants to them, before you buy from them. But this, this video is just about trading plants on Facebook. So we're not gonna go into buying plants. So now I'm going to show you my experience with a recent Facebook trade. I traded with a very, very nice person. I came across her in search of post. She was looking for a philodendron melanocrysum Melanochrysum varicosum, and that's a big one. And I happened to have one. It was a juvenile plant, and it was one that I got last summer as one leaf for pretty cheap. <laughs> and <laughs> I was lucky. Um, and I grew it, and the older leaves looked, you know, old, uh, but the newer leaves, although small, because it was a baby plant, looked great. So, um, you know, I told her I had the plant and we just took it from there. The tips I just gave you, you know, we messaged each other, we sent each other pictures. What would you want in, you know, in return for this philodendron? I told her, I'm really looking to build my Hoya collection. She had a few that I don't have that have been on my wish list. So that's what we decided. We sent each other pictures of, you know, the plants. the roots, how we're shipping them, when we're shipping them, the tracking number and everything went smoothly. And I know that's not always the case for people who do trades on Facebook, but that's why I'm making this video to hopefully help you guys, uh, give you some tips. If you're new to the scene, it'll be really helpful because as much as we want to believe that plant people, <laughs> that all plant people are kind, it's just not the case and it's honestly getting so crazy right now because plant prices are going through the roof auctions are going through the roof so if i didn't look into this person and i said i had a philodendron melanocrysum varicosum and they were like a scammer they could have just gotten my plant and probably auctioned it for a good amount of money even though it was a baby like people they're, they're just greedy like just watch out, okay? That's it, that's all I'm saying, just watch out. In these next clips, you're going to see how I packaged the plant that I sent her, the images I sent her, um, I might've sent her videos, I'm not even sure. Definitely photos. How I packaged the plant, and then you're going to see me unbox what she sent me. And I just, I really hope this video is helpful for you. If you're familiar with trading on Facebook, maybe you'll relate to some of the things I'm saying. I'm hoping none of you were ever scammed, but I've seen a lot of things on these groups. A lot of people have gotten scammed and it's just a little scary right now in the plant community. Crazy, but I hope my tips help you have fun because it doesn't all have to be scary. You just gotta be smart, use your common sense, as exciting as new plants are and if someone says they've got this plant that you really really want and you just don't even think and you just agree to it you're gonna kick yourself in the butt you have to take a step back take a breather and realize not everyone is kind and do some research i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm sure there's similar ones out there but this video is based on my experiences and the tips that I want to give you guys. Uh, so I'm not sure what other videos have suggested. I might look and see what other videos are out there, but I didn't want to look beforehand. I'm actually going to look and see if there's any videos. There probably, there has to be. There has to be. <laughs> I just didn't want to look beforehand because I didn't want to see that people might have given the same tips as me and then I would have been so uninspired to make this video so anyway i hope you enjoyed it i hope you liked my unboxing and i'll see you guys next time bye hey guys so here's the part where i show you how i'm going to package the plant that i'm sending to the facebook person that i'm trading with okay so 
as mentioned, they're looking for a melanocrysum varicosum hybrid. I have one, it's small, it's first few leaves. Um, so I got this last summer and I think it came with one leaf, it grew another. Those are the oldest leaves. These are the newer ones and I have chopped it recently. So the newer leaves obviously look much better. I think these were like either sun damaged, water damaged, I don't know, but these ones look much, much better. Okay, and this is a hybrid. Oh, like my sticker. Guess who gave it to me? This is the plant they're looking for, and I'm going to show you how I'm packaging it. Um, I also want to mention I did send pictures of this plant to the other person. So they're well aware of these leaves. Um, I also asked them, you know, if they had a preference how I shipped it, if they would like me to ship it with some of the soil, like partially bare root with some of the soil as to not really disturb the roots or spag moss. And they did recommend that they'd like spag moss uh, because it's been pretty hot and they are from Arizona. So it's like in the 90s here today. It's going to go to a really hot state. So they'd like some spag moss to keep the roots from drying out. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. You know, that's what they, they wanted. So I'm going to do it and I'm going to pack it in a pot and package it up. So I'm going to show you with this spag moss. I think the company is now making it this, this package I got like months and months ago, but I think now they're compressing it even more. So this is one of the older packaging. So if this doesn't look like the, uh, moss that you've recently ordered. I think they've just changed it up a bit. Um, but it's the premium New Zealand spag moss. Got it from Amazon. Um, it's like all of a sudden very, very popular. So um, they've been selling out, but if you find it, it's gonna look exactly the same, just like smushed. I put the spag moss in this little plastic bowl. I'm going to soak it in water and then squeeze the excess water out. So I'm gonna let it soak for a few minutes. So I will show you guys the end product once I do that. I'm gonna just soak it now. So while this is soaking, I'm actually going to start taking this plant out of the pot and removing soil from the roots. Um, I'm just going to try to kill two birds with one stone. You want to do this as gently as possible as to not traumatize the plant as it is. It's going to be in a box for a few days. Um, so I'm going to package it as well as I can, but I don't want to traumatize it even more by pulling at the roots, hurting the roots. So when you're doing this, be super careful. So I usually use a little like shovel tool um, that I use specifically for plants. But for today, because I'm trying to be quick with this, I'm going to just use a regular spoon. So what I usually do is I go in and I try to scoop up the sides a bit, loosen up the sides. You can't see but to catch the soil and dump the soil. This is what it looks like, and I'm just gonna try to remove as much dirt as I can. Once you have the plant removed from the pot and all the soil removed, I'm going to take the spag moss and squeeze. Oops, <laughs> some of the excess water out. <laughs> That like went everywhere. Okay. And we're just going to start putting some in the pot. I feel like when plants are shipped in pots, they just ship better. I feel bad that this plant had to be taken out of its original pot, but that's what happens. Now, I am worried about the plant because it's been hot out. This week is hot, but I did ask 
the person I'm trading with, if they were okay with us shipping or if they'd like for me to hold off and they said it was okay. Uh, so I am a little worried. I think it'll be fine. Worst case scenario is like root rot or something. But I'm squeezing this out as to not overwater the roots. But uh, if that does happen, there's a good amount of nodes on this plant that they could just root it up. Um, I mean, the plants they're sending me, I think they're rooted or partially rooted, but, but yeah. So, I mean, if you've got some good nodes, it's not that, that horrible. But I'd still like to avoid that from happening. All right, so we've got it in a pot with the moss. I'm keeping the pole in here that I had, um, the support pole. You don't have to do that, but I'm doing that. So now what I'm gonna do to help the plant from moving around too much is I'm just going to put some paper towel on top of the moss. like so and gently okay I just kind of twisted it and put it in like a spiral okay but that is not all that's not all we're gonna do it doesn't end there I'm gonna take some saran wrap some plastic wrap and just go over it to hold it in place I don't package every plant the same way. It depends on what materials I have on hand. I like to recycle materials a lot. So, but this is how I am packaging this plant. I just figured I would show you guys. So I'm going over it with the plastic wrap. <laughs> shouldn't dry out and then I'm just going to put some tape around it too yeah I'm testing it as well not sponsored yeah, they're definitely gonna have to like pry this plastic off with like the jaws of life but as long as the plant is safe and doesn't move around that's good okay that's good so we're going to channel our inner seeds leaves and try to package it so delicately Actually gonna also put some stuffing in there probably some more paper towel okay I'm actually just gonna put some stuffing inside so that the leaves don't get damaged okay it's all wrapped up so in goes the plant fits and I'm gonna put some cushion on the side so it doesn't move around too much. But you can use whatever you've got on hand. Okay, and I'm gonna plop a little letter in there thanking her for trading with me, uh, and then we're good to go. Okay, so typically I have some really cute planty cards to send along to people. I'm all out, so I wrote my note on a little piece of paper, and it basically just says, thank you for trading with me. I hope it makes it to you safely and that it doesn't encounter any, any shipping damages or anything. Um, keep me posted on when, and, when you get it and how it arrives and on its glow up, because I'm pretty sure it'll be happier with somebody else. Um, I will say I definitely haven't been paying too much attention to this plant. Um, it just, that just happens, you know? So I'm gonna put that in there. 
right on the top. Hopefully she'll see it. And then I'm gonna tape this box up. When you tape it up, you wanna make sure you really can't hear anything moving around in there. Okay, just gonna give it the shake test. Pretty good. So that's how you know it is all set. And then you just either print out a shipping label or bring it to the post office and they'll do it all for you. Hey guys, future editing Alex here. So as I'm editing the video, um, I'm noticing that it's about 30 minutes long or at least approaching that. And I feel like that's a little bit too long of a video. And I feel like people aren't gonna wanna watch a video that long. So I'm going to cut it here. Um, I will show you the other end of the trade, what was shipped to me in my next video. It'll be up super quick. I just don't want this to run too long. Okay. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and the tips I think could help anybody, whether you're a new planty collector or an experienced one. Um, you know, there's just, there's a lot of things going on in the plant community right now. They're getting really expensive and I think people are just desperate to make some cash. So just, you know, be safe, have fun and do your research. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.